In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to install OpenLink's multi-tier generic ODBC driver on Windows. I'm working with 32-bit Vista. However, the procedure that I'm documenting is identical for 64-bit Windows operating systems. I do want to point out two things. If you are working with the 64-bit Windows operating system, those systems are capable of hosting both 32-bit applications and 64-bit applications. You want to make sure that if your application is 32-bit, you have the corresponding OpenLink 32-bit generic ODBC driver. If you're working with 64-bit client application, you want to make sure that you have OpenLink 64-bit drivers. Additionally, the multi-tier generic ODBC driver is the client portion of OpenLink's multi-tier product. You need to ensure that you have the corresponding multi-tier server components for connectivity to take place. If you do not have the multi-tier server components installed, or if you don't know if you have the multi-tier server components installed, at some point you want to do one of two things. You want to locate the person in your organization who is responsible for server-side administration, or you want to locate the videos in in the multi-tier ODBC connectivity series that pertains to your server architecture so you can take care of matters yourself. That said, we can proceed with the installation. OpenLink's latest installers ship as .msi files. Some of our legacy installers still ship as zip files. In either case, you want to locate your file, double click it, and extract the contents. This is the installer splash screen. Just click next. OpenLink recommends that you actually review the terms of the license agreement that ships with our software. Once you've done so, click the acceptance box, then click next. You have the option of choosing amongst a typical complete or custom install. The custom option is really only useful if you want to change the install path for the product. If you're new to use of OpenLink software, we suggest that you just go with the complete option and click the install button. Allow the product to install. This may take a moment. The installation of the product is complete, so you can just click the Finish button. At this point, you probably want to proceed to the testing phase of the ODBC driver. You may do so provided that two conditions are met. First, as I said earlier, you need to have the multi-tier server components installed. Not only that, you need to know the IP address or host name of the machine that hosts that server components installation and you need to know the TCP port that the multi-tier server components use to answer requests for ODBC connectivity that come from the client portion of the product. Second, you do need to know some basic information about your target database. You need to know what DBMS hosts that database. Is it a progress DBMS or a Postgres DBMS? Is it a Microsoft SQL Server DBMS or a Sybase SQL Server DBMS? You need to know the actual database name. You probably need to know a username and password associated with that database. You may need to know a TCP port used for ODBC connectivity purposes that would be associated with the database. Depending on the database's capabilities and your overall ODBC data access architecture, you may need to know even more information in order to establish a connection. Therefore, OpenLink product support suggests that you review the per database connection prerequisites videos before you embark on DSN creation and once you have gathered all the information that you need to ensure a successful connection then view the database specific DSN creation videos and that should get you connected. This concludes this lesson.